All right, you can turn your Bible to John chapter 10. I've been tossing around this idea for a while, you know, to try and do this study to kind of put something together on this. We're going to talk today about the fellowship of the Spirit. Um, there's a lot of things that, that uh, lost people, infiltrators, ministers of Satan, um, they, can in, they can copy and imitate a lot of things, but the one thing that they can't get is the fellowship of the Spirit. Uh, and I've seen that thing. Uh, years and years ago, I debunked this uh, just evil, wicked man, Martin Richling. And I said about, you know, the fellowship of the Spirit. And he laughed and he mocked and he's like, oh, the fellowship of the Spirit, uh, and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I saw a lot of times in his mocking of me that he would, he would mock me and then he'd look back at the screen and I'd see him swallow really hard. He was nervous. So his, uh, you know, the Bible says, fools make a mock at sin. Um, you see, he was trained, and I believe that he was actually trained as a Jesuit, uh, temporal coadjutor. In other words, somebody that works in the temporal realm. He's not a Jesuit priest, per se. He's out there in the secular world and things like that, but he's a coadjutor. He, he helps the agenda of the Jesuit order. And that is, in, I mean, that's their terminology. I'm not just making that up. And, um, but the one thing that people, lost people, cannot imitate is the fellowship of the spirit i'm just going to say it right up front here and that is the fellowship of the spirit is when you as a christian you start to watch somebody and you start getting a weird feeling and you don't you can't explain it it's just kind of a nervous feeling kind of like a uh, you know they say the gut feeling kind of like right in here kind of like right at the base of where your ribs come together up in here you kind of feel like a a nervousness in there kind of a weird feeling and, you know, it's funny because the Mormons, they try to say, oh, it's the burning of the bosom, you know, that you, whatever. <laughs> they try to imitate it. They can't. But as a Christian, you'll, you'll hear people and you go, yeah, okay, it sounds, sounds good, but, you know, I don't know. There's something there. I don't know what it, it just makes me nervous. And yet you'll hear a Christian sometimes and it's just like you'll feel that, that fellowship. And a lot of times, I've seen this thing so many times, I don't even keep track of it. Um, but, you know, I've seen this thing where it's like the Lord impresses on my heart, hey, you need to do a study on whatever. And I do the study and I look down in the comments and I see one of you going, I had this question. I wanted to ask this question. It's just like weird. It's like the Lord's reading my mind. And, and it's just like you said exactly what I was, the exact question, the exact way it was worded in my mind. How is that possible? The Fellowship of the Spirit. And I'll tell you right now, there's, there has been, literally there has been times I have a study planned and one of you will say in the comments, could you do a study on such and such? And I'm like sitting there. I mean, I've literally had it times where I'm sitting there typing out the notes and I, oh, I'm just going to check YouTube quick to see any comments or whatever. And I'll see somebody say in the comments, could you do a study on such and such? And I'm doing it. And it's just like, okay, this is weird. Fellowship of the Spirit. And again, you'll see this with Christians. You'll see, you know, somebody writes a comment and they're just like going through some kind of thing and you go, I'm going through the same thing. You know, like, man, this is weird. We're going to talk about that in this study. John chapter 10, verse 1. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. It's the rapture, in other words. He's going to call you by name, if you're saved, and me, and he's going to say, come up hither. Just like he did with John, in John, uh, Revelation chapter 4. And ironically, it's uh, the book of John that we're reading. It's a coincidence. There are no coincidences in the Bible, or in real life. Continuing, John chapter 10, verse 4. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. Okay? Now, Jesus Christ will speak through a preacher. And you'll see sometimes where a preacher will get messed up and things. And, you know, and again, the Catholics will try to imitate this. Satan always tries to imitate everything. They'll say, well, when the Pope is speaking ex-cathedra, 
from the chair, in other words, then that's infallible. But there's other times that he speaks and you can kind of disagree with that or whatever else. They're just trying to copy what Christians have, you see. They're trying to copy a real spiritual gift and they can't. You know, it's kind of funny. But a preacher speaking for the Lord, you'll get that feeling of, okay, yeah, I can trust what this guy is saying. Fellowship of the Spirit. Verse 6, This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were which he spake unto them. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out and find pasture. What does John see? In Revelation chapter 4, he looks up into heaven and he sees a door open. Hmm. Interesting. Jesus is the door. We go in, come up hither. We go up to heaven, in. We come back out at the second coming. Come down with Jesus Christ back down to the earth. And what do we do when we get there? Find pasture, the millennial kingdom. It's going to be an agrarian wonderland. <laughs> it's going to be amazing. The Lord's going to restore this earth back to the Garden of Eden type conditions. We're going to be getting along with animals and everything else. It's going to be a good time. We will find pasture. Verse 10, The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is an hireling and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth, and the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep. Hmm. The hireling fleeth because he is an hireling and careth not for the sheep. How many subjects that are talked about on this channel do you ever hear other preachers talk about? And it's no glory to me. I'm just simply saying, just stating a fact. I went to you know, Baptist churches and other, you know, churches out there for years and years and years. And I had so many questions. They won't touch the questions if it's controversial. You see, why? It's a hireling. Well, uh, uh, Brother Brian, you know, we can't speak against the Catholics because if we do, um, I, I mean, we could lose this church. That could cost us a lot of uh, <coughs> money. It was told to me. I'm not making that up. And you know that that's the case. A lot of these preachers, they're scared to death to say anything controversial, anything that might, uh, you know, kind of upset the tithers, you know. Yeah, they're hirelings. That's what they are. Verse 14, I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, talking to the Jews there. Interesting, he's talking, this is prophetically speaking, I believe, about the Gentiles. Them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Read Galatians chapter 3, verse 28. All right, there's neither Jew nor Greek. There's neither man nor free. There's neither male nor female. You're all one in Christ Jesus. Okay? And that doesn't mean that then there's no distinction and things like that. There's still distinction. Unless you believe in the transgender movement, you know, because it says neither male nor female. So, you know, some of these, you know, idiot Baptist replacement theology, you know, closet Catholics, they try to come out and they say, there's neither Jew nor Greek, you know, there are no more Jews. Okay, uh, well then in the same context, it says there's neither male nor female. So I guess they're all transgendered perverts or something then. They don't think too much, you know. But the whole point is there, there's one fold. So saved people right now in what we would call the church age, saved people are composed of saved Jews, saved Gentiles. And we're all one fold. And the fellowship of the Spirit has to be there between both. Let me show you. Acts chapter 2. Let's go to when the uh, church was just starting. Acts chapter 2. And again, we understand that the book of Acts is a transitional book. So a lot of the things that are happening early on, you have the, the Jewish disciples of Jesus going to the Jews at first. And then you see it start to transition where now they're starting to talk about that 
other sheep which I have, you know, that Jesus talked about in John 10, that are not of this fold, you know, Gentiles in other words, you see that transition start to happen as the book of Acts progresses. But here we have them dealing specifically with the Jews. Acts chapter 2, verse 42 through 47. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship. Hmm, see that more as we continue. And in breaking of bread and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. All right? Wonders and signs. For who? The Jews. The Jews require a sign. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. You can read about that. Verse 44. And all that believed were together and had all things common, and sold their possessions and goods, and parted them to all men, as every man had need. And they continuing daily with one accord in the temple, and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. The church is always a reference to a group of people, never to a building. But the whole thing that's important there is they were in one accord. They were in agreement. They were in good fellowship. That's very important. You know, we have this thing of, oh, we can agree to disagree. Uh, well, not really. There's only three areas, really, I think it's three, that uh, you can really agree to disagree, quote-unquote, in the Pauline epistles, and that is diet. You know, there's one that eats meat, another one that's weak, eats herbs and things. Let her, you know, you're... There's no, you know, that, that him that's eating meat is not to put down the one that eats herbs. Okay, you have diet. You have celebrating holidays, different things there. Um, you know, that every man is to be fully persuaded in his own mind. One man esteems one day, another man doesn't. Be fully persuaded in your own mind. Okay, and then also head coverings. Okay, again, you have different traditions, different cultures. Some women wear head coverings to show they're, you know, I'm married and whatever else. Um, and Paul's saying, you know, if any man seem to, be, seem to be contentious in this matter, we have no such custom, neither the churches of God. He's saying it doesn't matter. Okay? Um, there's no scripture that says we can agree to disagree on the timing of the rapture. Or on the, uh, which Bible version you prefer. There's no scripture like that. Well, we can agree to disagree on uh, repentance versus just the easy believism, free grace. What? No. No scripture on that. We can agree to disagree on the type of music that's appropriate. And no, sorry. You see, we're supposed to be in one accord. You see, then why is there so many divisions? There's there's so much division in so many Protestant denominations. Oh, uh, yeah, because they're false. Bible believing Christians are saved; the rest are lost. Just as simple as that. Let's continue. First Corinthians chapter one. First Corinthians chapter one. We got we're getting snow right now, so if you're hearing a lot of noise outside, it's the town office is like right over there, and they got the big plow trucks coming back and forth and back and forth. So, First Corinthians chapter one verses nine and ten. God is faithful, by whom ye were called unto the fellowship of His Son Jesus Christ our Lord. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Huh? How is that possible? When we have more than one Bible. When we have more than one type of music. When we have more than one this and more than... You see? There should be fellowship there. And there's there's going to be points that will be brought up within you know, the body of Christ and things like that. We're going to see that as we continue here. There's going to be stuff that's going to be brought up sometimes and there has to be some you know, questions back and forth and things and some discussion. And, and I believe that it's the proper place for men that have been saved for a while and you know, elders in the church and things to kind of discuss it back and forth. We don't have apostles anymore, but we can certainly say, um, hey, what do you think about whatever, and we can discuss it back and forth. People can put their input in and stuff like this, but the whole point is, at the end of the day, we have to come to agreement. We're to be in the same judgment. Let's 
unless it's one of the areas where we can agree to disagree on. Diet, holidays, head coverings. First Corinthians chapter 10. I'll show you the next one. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 19 through 21. What say I then, that the idol is anything, or that which is offered in sacrifice to idols is anything? But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. Hmm, that's kind of an interesting thing. You know what Mary is? The Roman Catholic Church, you drive down the road, you see this like half bathtub thing and this little Mary standing there. You know what that is? It's a devil. Where in the Bible does it say to make a statue of Mary and worship it? Go and pray to it and stuff like this. doesn't. Where does the Bible say anything about making statues of any saint? doesn't. Those are devils. Uh, specifically, if you want to get right down to it, it's Semiramis. It's a depiction of the ancient queen of heaven, you know, Semiramis. As you read about back in the book of Jeremiah, they were actually making cakes to the queen of heaven. And when the Jews back then were rebuked for it, they said, so what? We're not going to change, essentially. We're not going to quit. Again, not much changes. <clears throat> Verse 21. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. You cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. Interesting that these devils, these idols, in other words, um, they like to have people make drink offerings. You know, excuse me here, I got I got a call for a minute. Eucharist, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> you know, they're making cakes to the Queen of Heaven back in the book of Jeremiah, and here it says that they are having drink offerings to their idols. I'm a Catholic, and I find God in the Catholic Church. And I, uh, yeah. You find devils in the Catholic Church. Let's continue. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14 through 18. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? What are the idols? They're devils. For ye are the temple of, of the living God. As God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. How can you have fellowship with lost people? And yet that's exactly what lost, or these, these church buildings do. They invite the lost into them. Something else, isn't it? And, you know, again, i got to just say this. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, a lot of people say, well, that's about marriage and things. You're not to be unequally yoked together with an unbeliever, you know, and stuff. Uh, it doesn't say that. Be not e unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Plural. All right? You're not to be unequally yoked together spiritually and trying to get along with, you know, let's have a, a you know, pro or anti-abortion rally or, or some pro-life rally, we'll say it that way. And uh, the Catholic Church is also going to join us here and stuff. Nope. Nope. All the Catholics are involved in this thing? Nope. Not going to have anything to do with it. You say, oh, then you're for abortion? I didn't say that. I said I'm not going to have fellowship with the unfruitful war works of darkness there. All right? With unbelievers. Second Corinthians chapter 8. Verses 1 through 5. Moreover, brethren, we do you to wit of the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia, how that in a great trial of affliction the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded unto the riches of their liberality. For to their power I bear record, yea, and beyond their power they were willing of themselves, 
praying us with much entreaty that we would receive the gift and take upon us the fellowship of the ministering to the saints. Interesting. And this they did, not as we hoped, but first gave their own selves to the Lord and unto us by the will of God. Self-sacrifice is part of fellowship. And here you have these people that were very, the churches of Macedonia, they didn't have much money. Their deep poverty, it says about there, and abounded under the riches of their liberality, and yet they were giving to the work of the Lord. And, I, you know, I'm not trying to do some kind of church building thing or something. Oh, you know, how much, if you're very poor, then give more money or something. I'm not saying that, all right? It's the concept there that's important. You make sacrifices that really cost you something. And Paul, what's a Paul say here? Verse 3, for to their power I bear record. He's saying, yeah, these people are really intensely strong Christians. I mean, the Apostle Paul bearing record to the power of a bunch of people as Christians. It's really something. Um, what is that forge between him, well, between Christians, I'll say it that way. Uh, fellowship? Mm -hmm. I mean, I've not seen too many people that have really been supporters of this ministry. I haven't seen too many of them fall apart doctrinally. Most people that have supported this ministry and not just, you know, oh, here's this little, you know, whatever else or something. Again, I'm not trying to make this amount of money. Please don't twist my words and make it into that. What I'm saying is people that really sacrifice to help this ministry out and really sacrifice their time. I've had people do that. It's, you know, again, it's not about money or something. It's about people sacrificing and I see people sacrificing their time, you know, and efforts and, and I mean, just whatever. Just trying to encourage us and, and, and things, keep us going. And a lot of them, I see some real power there in their lives. Some real spiritual power. And we have good fellowship. And if you want the power of God in your life, you've got to sacrifice some things. Sacrifice your time to the Lord. Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2, verse 1. Then fourteen years after, I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas and took Titus with me also. And I went up by revelation and communicated unto them that gospel which I preach among the Gentiles, but privately to them which were of reputation, lest by any means I should run or had run in vain. Okay, just stop right there. That's what I was talking about earlier. Um, part of the thing of fellowship as Christians is we bounce ideas off of each other. I come out and I say, you know, this thing of this, you know, peace treaty between the Jews and the Muslims. Brethren, do any of you know where the scripture is at? Where did this teaching come from? I, I don't see it in scripture. I see it's confirming the covenant. I think it's going to be a covenant that's confirmed between the Catholics and the Jews. What do you think? You see? And you give me your input and you say, well, brother, I think that such and such, and, but have you considered this and have you that and thought about this and whatever? And I go, oh, yeah, that's a good point. Uh, you know, we're bouncing ideas off of each other. Did the same thing back then in the first century. But we have to have fellowship, you see. We have to have that, you know, fellowship of the Spirit. Verse 3, But neither Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised, and that because of false brethren, unawares brought in, who came in privily to spy out our liberty, which we had in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage. False brethren? And don't tell me, well, false brethren just simply means that they were, they were saved, but they just were a little, you know, they, a lot of, uh, disagreements and agreeing to disagree. No, false brethren, they're lost. But look at this. Remember the fellowship. Verse 5, To whom we gave place by subjection, no, not for an hour, that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. Hmm. They're saying, uh, we're not going to put up with you. Get out of here. They didn't uh, have good fellowship with them. In other words, hey, those are false brethren. They're trying to mess people up doctrinally. They didn't say, well, you know, you can just stay here and post your heretical comments on my channel and, and go after other people and things like that. And I've had a lot of you, you know, faithful brothers and sisters that I know that, you know, we've had some good fellowship. 
and you write to me and you say, um, Brother Brian, you might want to check into, and you give me a username, uh, they're teaching this and they're teaching that. You know, they're, they're saying, you know, you can lose your salvation. They're attacking once saved, always saved, you know, and things. And, and they're saying, this one over here is starting to use Calvinism. This one over here is starting to, you know, go post-trib. And they're this one and that one and whatever else. And I have to take care of that. Why? Um, because I'm not going to give them subjection. No, not for an hour. I see, I mean, people can, you can voice your opinions and things like that. You're free to. But you don't use profanity on my channel. You don't post links to videos, heretical type of things and whatever. I mean, if it's something that you've done yourself and I check it out and it's okay, sure, it's there. If I say, hey, does anybody know where that link to such and such video or does anybody have information on whatever and you post a link, that's fine. Okay, but if you if I see heretical things and whatever, I'm going to leave some of that there just simply because the Bible believers on this channel will answer that and they'll get back and forth with the person and whatever. And sometimes I've seen them straighten them out. But if I see somebody and they're just continuing the strife and contention, boom, you're done. You're done. I'm not going to waste my time on you. We don't have the fellowship of the spirit. You see. Verse six, Galatians chapter two, verse six. But of, the, but of these who seem to be somewhat, whatsoever they were, it maketh no matter to me, God accepteth no man's person. For they who seemed to be somewhat in conference added nothing to me. But contrarywise, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me, as the gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter, for he that wrought effectually in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision, the same was mighty in me toward the Gentiles. And when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me, they gave to me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship that we should go unto the heathen and they unto the circumcision. Only they would that we should remember the poor, the same which I also was forward to do. Now notice here, verse 8, oh, excuse me, verse 9. And when James, uh, Cephas, and John, Cephas is another name for Peter there, by the way, uh, who seemed to be pillars... They seem to be these great, you know, these are actual apostles. I mean, these guys are, they were the ones that were walking with Jesus. This is really something else. But what did Paul say up in verse 6? Whatsoever they were, it maketh no matter to me. God accepteth no man's person. Okay. Paul didn't say, oh, oh you're an apostle. Oh, oh, you saw Jesus and things like this. I mean, Paul's an apostle as well. But he didn't say, oh, oh you know. And you shouldn't do that with anybody in the body of Christ. There's to be respect. You know, an elder that labors in the word is to be counted worthy of double honor. Sure, absolutely. But you never put them up on a pedestal like a, the Catholic Church does, where you worship the man or something else. You know, hold your baby out to it so the, so the Pope can kiss the baby on the head or whatever and fill them full of devils. You, know? you don't want to do that. But look what happens here. Okay, very important point coming up. Verse 11. But when Peter was come to Antioch, I withstood him to the face, because he was to be blamed. For before that certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles. But when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing them which were of the circumcision. And the other Jews dissembled likewise with them, insomuch that Barnabas also was carried away with their dissimulation. But when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter before them all, If thou, being a Jew, livest after the manner of Gentiles, and not as do the Jews, why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? We who are Jews by nature and not sinners of the Gentiles, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. So you see, he was there and he's buddy-buddy with his Gentile Christian brothers and sisters and all of a sudden he sees a bunch of Jews coming and it's like, whoop, you know. And the Gentiles are over there saying, hey, Peter, you want some, want some pork? Want a piece of bacon? Peter's over there going, you know, <laughs> like this. And Paul comes and he's like, what are you doing? Aren't we all in one, one in Christ? Don't we have a fellowship? One fold? What are you doing? Now, you say, what's the point you're trying to make, Brian? The point I'm trying to make is we can be in fellowship and disagree with one another and have to rebuke one another. And it wasn't, you know, Peter said, well, I, I'll have to agree to disagree, you know, Paul. 
you should not have rebuked me. I am, I am, hey, I was an eyewitness to Jesus. I, I was there, you know, the whole thing, you weren't newcomer, you know. No, I wasn't there. See, it was, you know, later on, Peter's, you know, saying about, you know, as our beloved brother Paul hath showed me, you know, and what he's writing. So there has to be some correction there. And I've been corrected by some of the brethren. You know, I've, I've been corrected pretty good on a couple of things. And I, and I look at the scriptures and I go, oh, um, ugh. you know, I think I've been wrong. And I've come out and I've had to admit, oh, yeah, I'm wrong. Why? Uh, because of the fellowship of the Spirit, you see. My brothers and sisters say, hey, brother, you know, I, I don't, you know, I'm not trying to attack you personally here, but uh, doesn't the Bible teach this? You know, I mean, for years I've been attacked, you know, not attacked, but I've been rebuked uh, very softly by some of the brethren saying, uh, why don't you quit wasting your time on exposing all this other stuff and whatever else and just stick to preaching the book? You do a good job at it, Brother Brian, and, and I really wish that you would just focus on that and whatever else. You're going through all this negative spiritual attacks. Well, we'll you know, come off the battlefield for a little bit there and just you know, kind of encourage the brethren. And, you know, in my pride, I was just like, I got it, I got it, I can just expose everything on earth. And it was affecting my preaching. And the Lord finally convicted me through my brothers and sisters in Christ and just said, you know what? Just kind of restart the ministry here. Thank the Lord for my brothers and sisters in Christ. See, I didn't say, well, we'll just have to agree to disagree. I'm just going to keep doing my thing. No, the Lord convicted me because the body of Christ was used by the Lord to bring that conviction, you see. And I say, hmm, I think I better change. The Lord answers your prayers. You see? Fellowship of the Spirit. That's what we're talking about. Ephesians chapter 3, we'll go there next. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 1 through 9. For this calls I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles, if ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me to you, word, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in few words. What's this mystery? Well, remember what we read over there, that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed to Paul? And he goes up and he says, you know, after 14 years, he goes up to the, you know, other apostles in Jerusalem and he says, hey, I want to present this thing the Lord showed to me um, just to kind of bounce it off you guys. To, you know, let me know what you think. Here he's talking about that mystery that was revealed to him. Uh, verse 4, whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel, whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. Unto me, who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given, that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ, and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. What's the fellowship of the mystery? I am born into a spirit of adoption, by a spirit of adoption, to the nation of Israel. The Jew says, well, I, I don't understand how that works and things. Well, get saved, you'll understand. Okay? A saved Jew and a saved Gentile can have fellowship together. We can come together and we can see the scriptures and things like that. And we can, you know, we can talk about things. We can get along. It's a wonderful thing. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 11 through 13. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 11. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. Remember the fellowship there? Would not that you have fellowship with devils? The things that the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to idols. The things that the Gentiles sacrifice to idols, they sacrifice to devils. 
you know, talked about back there earlier. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10. But, you know, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those uh, things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light, for whatsoever doth make manifest is light. You can reprove evil things that are out there. Okay, why? So to warn Christians not to have fellowship with that stuff. But, I need to make a point here, which I have been seeing this thing now for a long time. Verse 12, For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. Works of darkness and things. And, and I'm going to tell you right now, my wife and I were talking about this this morning, and, uh, you know, interesting subject here. You need to be real careful when you watch exposés or I'm a former Illuminati grand high priestess, witch's daughter's sister-in-law or whatever, you know, and, and let me tell you the gory details of what I went through. Uh, no, it's a shame even to speak of those things which are done to them in secret. And I have seen this thing. I've been contacted many times by people, you know, oh, I'm former Hollywood, or I'm former this, and I'm former that. And they'll say, I have a lot of things to tell you, and I have gone through some things. And, and they start telling me stuff, and I'm going, okay, this is like a lot more than I want to know, okay? Um, I really don't want to know a, a lot of this stuff. I mean, some things, as a Christian, you, yeah, okay, talk about some things. Yeah, I was involved in whatever. But a lot of the gory details... You shouldn't be saying that stuff. And I've learned that these witches and things that are out there and things, I'll call them witches. You know, they might not be practicing witches, but they're trying to bring you under a spell. And that is they will play on your carnal curiosity to make you just go, oh, really? Oh, oh you, were, you went through satanic ritual abuse and, and Nicole Kidman was there and she watched as they were you know, doing this and doing, oh, and, and you're sitting there just like being totally defiled by these very graphic, gory stories, and you're just going, huh, they're violating that scripture right there. It is a shame even to speak of those things which are done to them in secret. If somebody has gone through satanic ritual abuse or some kind of other thing, and they get saved, they shouldn't be going around telling people all the gory details. But what happens is, and I've seen this thing so many times, where they'll, they'll you know, I mean, I, we had somebody recently, and, and, you know, it's just like they contact us, and, oh, well, you know, I need to have some questions answered, and blah, 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 and, and stuff, and, and, and they're get, getting the stuff of the, that they were this, and they were that, and all this other horrible, wicked stuff, and, and it's just like, I'm going to tell you more, you know, as time goes by. And I'm going, I don't want to know more, you know. And, and, and just, I can see, you know, I mean, this is like literally just a, a letter we just got in the mail like yesterday. Um, and I can, I can see, it's like, you're trying to pull me in. You're, you know, it's this situation ethics. Well, I'm forced into this situation and, and I don't know what to do. I mean, I, I guess I'm going to have to take the lesser of two evils and, and think, it's mind control. It's just like, I wasn't born yesterday. I may not be the sharpest knife in the drawer, but, you know, I do have, you know, some discernment from the Lord. I've been in this ministry now for a long time, and I've dealt with a lot of people, all right? Um, brethren, you need to be real careful. When you start to hear somebody exposing something that they were part of, and they get into a lot of really ultra-gory details, and you start feeling dirty, watch out for that. Philippians chapter 1. Verse 1, Paul and Timotheus, the servants of Jesus Christ, to all the saints in Christ Jesus, which are at Philippi, with the bishops and deacons, grace be unto you, and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, uh, for you all making request with joy, for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Even as it is meet for me to think this of you all, because I have you in my heart, inasmuch as both in my bonds and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel, ye all are partakers of my grace. For God is my record, how greatly I long after you all in the bowels of Jesus Christ. It's interesting, I'll get back to that. And this I pray, that ye, that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment, 
that ye may approve things that are excellent, that ye may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by, uh, which are by Jesus Christ, unto the glory and praise of God. Okay? Uh, the thing of the bowels. We're going to see this again as we continue. Again, I believe, again, you know, the, the modern medical scam thing they try to make bowels the lower the, the intestines and things the lower the you know and things like that that's your bowels you have a bowel movement okay you understand what i'm saying there but in the bible bowels are more like the what you're feeling up in here they're the upper viscera i guess you would call it up in here and things like that that feeling that you get you know where you get really really nervous and again i've seen this thing i remember the one time going into this catholic Roman Catholic bookstore, and they had all these statues and things like that. And I went in there, and it was just like that, uh, is like the butterflies in the stomach thing, but it's a different, slightly different type of nervousness, where you're just like, okay, I really, really, really feel creeped out in here, and I'm just like, Bleh. why? Well, the things that the Gentiles sacrifice to idols, they're sacrificing to devils. The idols are devils. These Catholic idols and things like that, they're devils. That's what they are. So it's like you're walking into a place that has a bunch of statues of devils and plenty of devils hanging around, I'm sure. You don't belong in there. You know, we went in to do some tracting and things like this. This was back in New York the one time we were there uh, uh, living in that area. And um, not New York City, but area of New York. But, uh, you know, my wife and I went in. You know, you'll feel that. And you also feel it with another Christian. You'll feel that kind of a joy right there. Let's continue. I'll show you another reference to this. Um, Philippians chapter 1, verse 27. Here's another one that lines up with you know, 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Philippians 1, 27. Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ, that whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs, that ye stand fast in one spirit with one one mind striving together for the faith of the gospel. What is that? Fellowship. <laughs> We're in one spirit. And how do we strive together for the faith of the gospel if everybody has different Bibles, each one which, you know, whatever one you, you prefer, and they say different things? We're supposed to have fellowship, brethren. Philippians chapter 2, verse 1 through 3. See it here again. If there, if there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies. Well, we just read up there in uh, Philippians chapter 1, verse uh, 8. For God is my record, how greatly I long after you all in the bowels of Jesus Christ. Down here, sec, uh, chapter 2, verse 1. Any bowels and mercies? This, you know, well, let me just finish and I'll get back to making my point. Verse 2. Fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. They're in one accord in Acts chapter 2, and you're still supposed to be in one accord right now. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in loneliness of mind let each esteem other better than themselves. Humility. It's supposed to be there. But again, how can we do this if we're not if we don't have that fellowship of the Spirit? We can't. Philippians three Snowmobiles. Um, Philippians chapter 3, verse 10. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. Uh, let me ask you a question. Not only are we supposed to just say this, not only are we supposed to be in fellowship with each other as Christians, uh, there's supposed to be some fellowship with Jesus Christ. And here's the question. How much do you have in common with Jesus Christ? Um, he was rejected by his kinsfolk, his own country, his hometown, so to speak. Are you? 
he had people that he thought were friends stab him in the back. Has that happened to you? He had people that were friends, but yet misrepresented him. How about you? He suffered. He cried. How you doing? I mean, when you get up there to heaven, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's weird because it's just like our flesh is just going up. But I, I don't want to suffer. And I, I want things to be good. And I want things to work out and, and, and whatever. Um, really? You get up there to heaven and, you, and, you know, what are you going to have in common with Jesus Christ when you see him? You will see him one day. Wouldn't it be nice to sit down and have some good fellowship with him? First hmm. John chapter 1. First John chapter 1. And you know, again, you'll, you'll have that fellowship of the Spirit. Again, that's, that's going to be a big part of it. Um, you'll see Christians and, you know, and it's just like you'll see somebody and they'll just be going through some kind of a problem. And you're like, oh, oh, brother, I've been through the same thing. You know, I mean, I've, I've had uh, men write to me over the years and say, you know, brother Brian, I just lost my job. I have no idea what I'm going to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I've been through that. You know, I've, I remember we were going through our time this year, 2017, of the house, or not the house, but our property with buildings I built on it. Uh, it's sold, but it's just like it's the, the settlement thing keeps getting put back and put back and put back. And I'm, I'm, you know, trying to get a property, and this one's not working out, and that one's not working out. And I'm getting frustrated. And I had some of you, and you wrote to me, and you said, yeah, we went through the same thing, brother. We went through this same exact thing two years ago, three years ago, whatever else, the Lord will get you through it. That meant a lot. It really did. What is it? Fellowship. Fellowship of the Spirit. And I find it ironic that uh, a lot of times these false prophets, you'll see them preaching, they'll never mention anything that they're going through. It's just everything's happy and wonderful. And, you know, they don't ever struggle with sin and they don't ever, you know, admit to messing up and things like that. And you look and you go, this is kind of weird. I don't have very good uh, fellowship with that uh, hireling. I, mean, <clears throat> I meant Christian. But let's continue here. First John chapter 1. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and show unto you that eternal life, which was with the Father, and was manifested unto us. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father, and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. This then is the message which we have heard of him, and declare unto you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. Hmm. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ his Son cleanseth us from all sin. We can have fellowship with saved brothers and sisters when we're walking with the Lord, when we're living right with the Lord. But as a Christian, when you start messing around with sin and you don't confess it, so you don't have to confess your sins to be saved, all right? Understand that, all right? There needs to be some contrition there. There needs to be some repentance, all right? But you don't have to say, I confess this one and I confess that one and I confess it, and then, and then eventually you get you know, saved or something like that. No, no. But you do have to confess your sins to say and stay in Fellowship with the Lord. Verse 8. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. There's many Christians that do. Professing Christians, I should say. Many professing Christians say, I had the old nature eradicated and I'm a new, new creature in Christ Jesus. I don't sin anymore. 
Church of the Nazarenes, they're like that. Some of the Pentecostal wingnuts are like that. The truth is not in them. Verse 9, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make Him a liar and His word is not in us. You know, if Paul had gone there to see Peter and he would have said, well, Peter... You know, he's wrong for doing what he's doing. He's, you know, causing dissimulation in the brethren or in the body of Christ. But I really don't want to say anything about it. I, I really don't want to. I don't want to make problems. Um, I'm just going to kind of keep quiet about it. Uh, what kind of fellowship would they have had? For him to have good fellowship with Peter, with his brother in Christ, he had to come in and say, "You know what, uh, Peter? Right in front of everybody, you're wrong." He put Peter in his place, and Peter, in humility, said, Oh, I'm wrong about that. I'm sorry about that. I've had to do that a couple of times. I've had some of you come to me and say, Brother Brian, I know you mean well, but boom. Thank you. I appreciate that. And I get lost people come along and say, Well, you're wrong on this and this. No, I'm not. <laughs> sorry. Uh, no, you're not going to tell me anything. All right. Say, brothers and sisters, yeah, I have fellowship there. And I can tell. But I get some postie coming along and some replacement theology nut and some buddy that, you know, works salvationist and whatever else or free gracer or whatever, you know, all these people. There's no fellowship there. You listen to them and it's just like listening to, you know, some boring thing or whatever else or just some rant of some lost person. There's no fellowship of the Spirit. And I've had... and here. Here's the difficult thing, brethren. Here's the real difficult thing. To know when the Lord is saying, eh, watch out for that one. And you get that feeling, that kind of a nervousness. You just got to, uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, they're, they're saying the right things. Anybody can study the Word of God. Anybody can watch these videos and try to imitate me. Anybody can watch Ruckman's stuff or read Ruckman's material. I won't mention any names. But they can read this stuff and they can come out and act like a Bible-believing Christian. But you know what? Something's going to feel weird when you try to watch them. You're not going to have the fellowship of the Spirit. The bowels there, they're just going to be like, I just get a nervous feeling. I, I, I don't know why that is. And I have literally, the Holy Spirit has tried to keep me from sinning numerous times with that feeling of just that nervousness, just that, ugh, and I just, in my stubbornness and my pride, I just go on ahead and do the thing that I'm getting that feeling of, watch out. And I just go on ahead and bam, I get hit. And I go, sorry, Lord, I should have listened. The Lord's are going, yeah, you should have, <laughs> you know. We have to, as the body of Christ, we have to refine one another. As iron sharpeneth iron, the Bible talks about. We're supposed to, as Christians, it's kind of like sword play, you know? We're, we're, you know, fencing and stuff, you know, and, and things, and saying, oh, well, doesn't the Bible say? You know, and, well, yes, the Bible does say, and, and we're going back and forth. And I've had brethren, you know, write to me and say, Brother Brian, I think that you're wrong for saying this or that or whatever, and, and it's a very, very friendly thing going back and forth. Then I get these people that are just like, you stinking heretic, you need to get saved, you're unsaved and all this stuff, and I'm going, okay, uh, we have no fellowship. We don't have any fellowship together. Um, that's why we called way back when, um, many years ago, our little house church, we called it Bible Believers Fellowship because we understood that fellowship there, you're not going to have people come in and be able to fake true fellowship of the Spirit. You're going to get a weird feeling. We had this crazy nut guy come the one time, crazy Charlie, we called him, and uh, met him at this public place um, and he wanted to be part of our house church and things and, and uh, I sat down and it was just like literally I looked at him and it was like uh, I started getting that feeling just this nervous feeling and I was like uh oh and I thought well okay maybe I'm just you know and I kind of tried to ignore it you know and I thought maybe everything's okay I'm just I'm just kind of I don't know kind of and, and as the guy was talking I'm going okay we got a real heretic here and he was nuts. 
He's post tribber hyper Calvinist. Lord knows what else. I mean, the guy was, he was crazy. Totally crazy. And I thank the Lord that, that was one time that I got that feeling and I was kind of, you know. And I've had people that, that come into the, to the circles of Bible-believing Christians here online and, and it's just kind of a, okay, well, they're saying some good stuff, but I'm getting that funny feeling. And there's just not much fellowship of the Spirit. I don't see them judging themselves and saying, oh, I'm really struggling with sin, brethren. I just really need some prayer. I don't see that. I see a kind of a prideful, egotistical spirit. Uh, I'm seeing some bad things. And I get some of you, and you'll write me and you say, hey, what do you think about so-and-so? I've been watching some of his stuff. I don't know what to think. Satan can't fake the fellowship of the Spirit. That's the important thing that we need to come away with here. And, you know, if you have a problem with me or if you have a problem with a brother and sister in Christ, get it sorted out. You know, there's a verse, I can't think of the, how it goes exactly, but I'm just going to paraphrase it here. It's about, you know, open rebuke is better than secret love, essentially. Um, yeah, you know, you, you need to be able to come out and, and rebuke kindly Sometimes if somebody's really messed up and there's causing dissimulation and things, you need to rebuke them and say, hey, brother, sister, be a little bit harsh. I did that with the uh, how Satan uses sexual sin to destroy a Christian. Um, I know a lot of Christians that are doing some of that stuff and messing around, dabbling in the flesh and things, you know, sexual type of stuff. And I'm going, you better stop. You better stop. And you know, like I said in the in the thing, I mean, I, by God's grace, I'm gonna I'm gonna be rougher on people. And if I see it, I'm just gonna say, hey, you need to stop this thing. And there there, are, it's weird. It's like you get you know, as a Christian, you get like people on different lists. You know, almost it's like definitely saved. Uh, I don't know. And are you kidding me? You know, it's just like you're gonna get that. You're gonna see that. You're going to see some people, you have such good fellowship with them. They're going through struggles. They're, they're just like, please pray for me. I'm really going through this thing. And you, and you give them some scriptures. And I mean, again, I've, I've dealt with people and I, I say, they ask me questions and I say, well, you know, here's what you can do. And uh, here's some things you can do to, to get your health fixed up. And here's what you can, here's where you can go in the Bible. And here's a good video that you can watch or a good book that you can read or whatever else. And they go with it. And I don't hear from them for a long time. And they're doing great. I see them, you know, a year or two later, they're doing fine. They're doing great. Praise the Lord. Fellowship of the Spirit. And on the flip side of that is, I'll get some people and they just ask questions after questions after questions after questions. And I try to counsel them and whatever. And there's just, they don't go anywhere and they don't do anything. And it's just this, there's no fellowship there. And eventually I just say, sorry, goodbye. We all have to be open to that, to that fellowship of the Spirit there. Do you have it with somebody? Are you feeling that weird kind of a gut feeling like, eh? and you know, as soon as you get that, don't just go, boom, you know, that person might not know certain things and whatever else, but if you give them information and again, they reject and whatever, uh, and you start getting that uneasy feeling, don't uh, put up with them, not even for an hour. Get away from me. I'll just finish here with a little story to kind of illustrate my point about the thing of getting away with from me. I remember the one time years and years and years ago, I was watching some marathon or something and uh, this race and this, this person's running in this marathon and there's a whole crowds of people, you know, on both sides and whatever else. And some crazy nut comes out of the crowd, runs over and tackles this runner and take him, takes him down. And, you know, the runner struggled and got back up. And, you know, the security guards grabbed this guy and, you know, drag him off and things. And, you know, the runner ended up losing the race. You know? And it's kind of a, a good picture. The Bible says that we're to run the race that's before us. You know, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. He's at the finish line. And, you know, the devil, he wants to sidetrack you. Uh, he wants to come send somebody from the crowd, you know, from the world and grab you and get you down. And that runner wasn't being vigilant. They weren't, they should have looked, you know, to the side or whatever else. They were just, 
run along, I guess, and they thought, oh, that kind of weird, you know, that they're not going to tackle me. Oh. And uh, that's what I'm saying here. If you don't feel that fellowship of the Spirit, you say, hey, well, just get away from me. Get away from me. Somebody comes along, well, we can agree to disagree. Can we shake on it? Don't touch my hand. No, nope, sorry. Get away from me. Nope. No, thank you. Hey, I really appreciate your ministry. Um, I just, I have a few points that I'd like to talk to you about. What are those points? Well, you're used to the King James Bible and your insistence on the King James Bible. I like the King James Bible, but I just think that there's a few areas where it could be translated. Nope. Get away from me. Don't have time for you. Sorry. Hopefully you see what I'm saying. I don't need to keep going off on examples here. But I've seen this thing so many times. The devil wants to get you off the racetrack. He wants to tackle you, get you down, pull you into the world or whatever else. That's why the fellowship of the Spirit is so important. Because sometimes, you know, you might get a faker. There's some real good fakers out there that are able to know the Bible and they they sound very legitimate. And they might say a lot of good things and really get a lot of their ducks in a row, as they say. But you'll just feel that thing and you'll just be... Why aren't they talking about struggles that they have? Why aren't they, you know, this and that, whatever... Uh, why am I not getting any fellowship of the Spirit here? You know? Hmm. Be open to the Holy Spirit's leading in this area. I need to be more open to it. Uh, there's been many times I've I've been listening to somebody, I'm going, I think they're pretty good. My wife's going, no, I don't think so. What, huh? I don't know. I don't know what it is. I just, I don't feel good about this person. You know? So... That's going to be it for this study. I do hope it's been a challenge to you. It's a challenge to me. Um, just, it's just so amazing, you know. It's just, Lord, could you please show me things? Lord says, okay, here's the fellowship of the Spirit. I want you to feel uneasy about that person because they're false. Well, I'm not sure, Lord. You know, I, I don't know. They might be okay. <laughs> you know, it's just, no, just listen to him. Just listen, you know. Are you getting a bad feeling? They're not lining up with certain things in Scripture. There's no fellowship of the Spirit there. You know, you're seeing some stuff, some unrepentant sin, and there's some other things that you're just going, okay, you know, I have a very uneasy feeling. Then get away from them. You're running a race. Don't let them come and get you and drag you down and get you off course. So that is going to be it. I uh, just want to say to everybody out there, if you celebrate Christmas, Merry Christmas, Freude von Achten, whatever, if you're from Germany, or whatever you do in your country. Uh, if you don't celebrate Christmas, well, then use it as a time to track. Use it as a time to witness to people. All right. Uh, if you're going to be with family, um, this is probably going to be up, you know, uh, Christmas Eve or so, this study. Uh, if you're going to be with family tonight or tomorrow or whatever else, Stand by the Word of God and uh, be open to the thing of the fellowship of the Spirit, even with your family. Because I know some people, you know, you say, well, I have professing Christian family members and things like that. And, you, and you're just, you know, I mean, we're, we're seeing, there's many times we're just like, okay, such and such members of the family are lost. And then it's like the Lord starts to kind of come in and, and starts to do some things and you kind of go, Okay, are they coming to a knowledge of salvation here? Are they starting to change? And they are starting to change. And you're... Interesting times that we live in. Uh, don't forget, brethren, that, and this is this is probably for another study sometime. Um, but there's a great multitude that gets saved in the time of Jacob's trouble, which no man can number. Revelation chapter seven talks about it. Uh, I don't believe that there's going to be a great revival. In the church age, at the end, there's going to be a great apostasy, a great falling away. And when the rapture happens, there's going to be an awful lot of people that are going to realize they've been deceived. And those people are all of a sudden going to get quite zealous. Okay, It's not that they loved you know, the lies and un had pleasure in unrighteousness like uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 talks about. It's not that. It's just they were very much deceived. They thought 
that they were Christians and whatever else, and they didn't have fellowship of the Spirit with Bible believers. So, as things get worse in the church age, there's going to be more and more people that are going to start to see little bits of truth. And it's like, I look at a lot of these people, and I'm going, I don't think that there's enough time that they're going to get in to go up. Interesting. So... That's going to be it. Please enjoy your holiday season or not enjoy your holiday season, whichever one you do. So uh, we will see you in the next study. Thank you very much for watching.